The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right, good morning, everybody. Christine Westerland here at ICA. Hope, welcome back to uh, the second round of the DCEO ICA collaboration webinar series. And it is um, thrilling to have a, a great speaker with us today, Dr. Barbara Mooney. Um, she will talk about embedding the role of professional in the agency. I think this is a great time for you to ask questions, to really think about what it is that you're doing. And how is it that you could really use uh, the Roma professional to the agency's best advantage? Um, I think it's really timely for us to do this. We have been increasing our cadre of Roma professionals in the state, and we're very excited about it. Um, a couple of things just to let you know about what's going on with this webinar today is that, uh, number one, this webinar is being recorded. It will be made available to everyone after the conclusion of the webinar. And number two, there is a short survey that will accompany the webinar. I think it is will become available to you immediately after the webinar and also emailed to you. So we would really appreciate it if you would take the time to fill out that survey. Um, it really would help inform our processes and also uh, DCEO's processes as well. Um, also um, joining me on the, on the webinar central here today is Carly Wiltsey. She is our newest trainer here at ICA. Um, I have to exit at some point in the middle of this webinar, sorry, Barbara, and Carly will take over. So um, without much further ado, um, I feel like I need a drum roll or something uh, to introduce you, Barbara. So please. <laughs> Th thanks, Christine. Um, just one little housekeeping thing. On my screen, I'm seeing uh, both the screen and then the next slide. Okay. I don't know if you could make Let's it just so we see the slide. Do that. Did that change it? Yes. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Right. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Very good. So, well, I I, I see we have um, we have like 22 people on the call. So that's um, right. quite a few people. Um, I can't see who you all are, but um, I'm, I'm going to speak to you all um, as if you are either certified Roma um, uh, implementers or trainers uh, or candidates. And um, if you are not, please um, bear with us. And if you have any questions about anything that I'm saying, put them in the chat and um, uh, Christina uh, will be kind of checking that chat as we go along. So, um, the the first the first question that I want to um, share with you is this um, this idea of what's my job as a certified Roma professional. So, uh, can you advance the slide there, Christine? Okay, but this idea of what am I supposed to be doing? When we created the um, the National Peer-to-Peer -Peer Training Project back in 1998, um, the the idea really was to uh, to standardize the understanding of Roma principles and practices across the country. So, increase understanding was our goal. Uh, but when the uh, organizational standards happened, uh, there was a, a little bit of a change in uh, what the Roma professionals were to be doing, and they were really to be assisting local agencies um, as well as uh, uh, providing just the training. So um, we created the implementer level as a more hands-on approach to local agencies. We began certifying folks in 2016, uh, sent them back to their agencies, and um, now we're getting this question about, well, what am I supposed to be doing? So um, one of the things that we feel um, should be happening is that the professionals are, as the title of this segment says, embedded in the agency. Um, they're, uh, they're actually trying to help the agency improve. So. How do we know what it is we're supposed to be doing? So, um, next slide. 
we, we need to really use our Roma principles and start with identifying the need. That, I mean, sometimes we, uh, we, we talk about our principles, but we don't necessarily use them. So um, the next slide is uh, going to be pretty familiar to you. It's just a reminder of the Roma cycle. Next. Uh, to determine a baseline. Uh, so our assessment piece is really about determining a baseline to find out where we are, uh, what we need to approve, what the needs are in our community. And then we if you click again, uh, determine what the change is that we want to see, what will happen if we employ certain strategies, um, and then how will we um, how will we achieve them? How, what will we do? We're going to put the, the plan into action, and then we'll come back and review what we've done, uh, review our progress, and then we'll start over again. We'll see what the new needs are and uh, determine what we need to do next. So let's just look at a little mini logic model here um, that that has to do with our with our program. So here's the need that we've identified, and this is the need um, that that we understand to be true, that the National Community Network has demonstrated an uneven understanding of the principles and practices related to Roma. Um, that, that's a need that has been identified um, through sort of anecdotal information um, as to as to what uh, what's happening in the network. But also, we know, click again, please. Christine, can you go ahead and click? There he is. It's not coming. <laughs> it's not clicking. Oh, it's not? We have it on what do you, so what do we know? In a blue box? Okay. Oh, no, but go back. Um, there's more on that first slide. Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay. Go back. No, yeah. Okay. If, 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 if you, earlier, yeah, go, go back, back, back. There we go. Okay, okay. that's good. Um, so we, we have two needs. That, that, the, the second need is that a network that's focused on delivery of service really has a limited capacity to achieve results. And that's something that we really have found over the last five years as we've been looking at the national theory of change, what it is our network is supposed to be about. And we see that, um, that across the country, uh, agencies that are focused more on delivery of services, uh, short-term services, uh, really have been, uh, have a limited um, ability to, to produce results. And so we're trying to, to do two things, both increase the standardized understanding of Roma principles and increase the, and, and therefore to increase the capacity of agencies to, to achieve results. So what are we, what are we reporting on? We're reporting on the number of individuals who become certified. Now, all of you on the line would reject that as an actual valid indicator for those outcomes because you're just, we're just counting the number of people. So it's an output measure. And as the outcome results network, we need to really understand what changes have happened. So we need to back up. So, so go on to that next slide with the boxes. So have we actually increased the standardized understanding of Roma? Um, can we actually say we have? Um, what's the agency actually doing to implement the full Roma cycle? And then how does Roma increase agency capacity? So these are really what we want to know more than we want to know how many uh, individuals are certified. And as Christina said, um, you're, we've increased our capacity, and in your area particularly, um, but, but so what? You know, that's the, that's the strategy to increase that. That's not the outcome. So we really have stepped back and we've, we've said we need to find out, each agency needs to be able to identify its baseline. 
Okay, next, next one. If we don't know where we started, then we're not going to be able to identify what has changed. So we have to have a baseline in order to know if something has changed. And next slide. Because if we can't identify that change that's happened, we can't acknowledge our success. We're, we're, we're stuck in uh, talking about outputs rather than outcomes. And this is a challenge that we have in our network at the community level as well. But this is at the agency level. What's changed for agency capacity? So we have to establish this baseline, and then that will enable us to measure our progress. So how do we establish a baseline? We're, we're talking now about using this checklist for implementation. We've had this checklist around for quite a while, but we're now talking about using it in a new way, using it to help you identify what you're doing now that would demonstrate the items on the checklist. And go ahead, next one. And then what could be done differently to actually include the Roma elements. So a lot of people have seen this checklist already, and um, you either have gotten it or you will you will get it um, uh, after the after the workshop. But uh, the next couple of slides are just a, a show of what this checklist looks like. So on this slide, we're looking at. Um, mission, local theory of change, assessment and planning, the first part of the Roma cycle. And there are just some action items, some ideas there. Um, and those of you who have done a portfolio uh, for the implementer certification will recognize some of these things as part of um, what you considered in your portfolio. What we're, what we're hoping to use this um, not just to check it off, yes or no, um, okay, yeah, there's a mission statement, it's been reviewed, um, there's evidence that the mission statement is actually being used uh, to guide agency decision making, uh, and that maybe the agency has uh, started to work on a theory of change. Not just a yes, no check off, um, like w what we're doing with some of the elements of the org standards assessment, but really to think about Who's doing it? How is it being done? Uh, what, what could be done differently? And how could the Roma professional be embedded in the activities related to these things? Or is it not necessary? Is, are these things happening, um, uh, being done to great degrees of um, uh, quality and the Roma implementer really just needs to be kind of the cheerleader for that um, and maybe could work on a different element. So this is the first part of the, of the checklist. And then the next slide is, the, is the, the last part of the checklist where we talk about implementation of the services and strategies. So services being direct family level services and strategies being uh, community strategies and agency capacity development strategies. So what are we actually implementing? Are the staff trained? Do they need any additional training? So uh, really a, an in-depth consideration of what's actually happening who's doing the, the observation and reporting of results? Um, is there analysis of the data actually happening? Are, 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 is our agency comparing um, the demographics of the population that were served with the population identified to be in need, for example? Is, is that routinely happening? And who's doing it and at what level? Um, are, are the direct service staff, the frontline staff, involved in the data analysis? Is the data analysis shared with those frontline folks? So, um, and then it, is any of that information being um, given to um, the folks that are going to do the next community needs assessment? with ideas about new questions that need to be asked or new data elements that could refine the assessment profile. So um, this kind of goes into back into planning, um, showing the cyclical nature of ROMA. So that, that's, um, 
that's what we're asking people uh, to look at. Um, go to the next slide, Christine. To, to consider these things like, can you find out what's happening right now? Um, like if I would open the lines and say, do you know exactly what's happening in all these areas? Or who do you need to talk to to find out more? Um, what's happening in the, depart the various departments in your agency? So it's important to be able to understand that. And then the next slide, um, as you consider um, who's involved, what's expected for this phase, and then how do you know if it's being done well? Um, that's part of the the piece that we've been missing. You know, we've been it's been a kind of yes no. Um, we've we've done this activity, but but how do we know if it's being done well? And um, what what makes this whole process useful? What's useful about this? Because as we try to really embed Roma in the agency functioning, it has to be useful for them, or it's not going to be um, uh, it's not it's not going to be accepted. It, it, if something's not useful, it's gonna it's going to be looked at as an add on or extra work to be done. Um, and then this. So the next, um, the next one really is kind of a summary. Um, once you have a baseline, you'll know what's happening right now and what's not happening. And that leads you to think of the outcome. So what's the next step that you could do? What could you do differently? What could you um, uh, impact? What could you change? What element could change and what could your part be in it? So um, I'm going to pause there and ask if um, if you have any uh, thoughts or considerations about this concept that we're calling aroma audit. You know, to audit where you are right now with Roma, so that then you can come back next year or six months from now and say um, what has changed, what's improved. Um, have we done anything differently? And then what, what has been the result of our change? Uh, has our agency capacity improved? So um, I'm going to ask Christina to open the lines and uh, give the, the folks um, an opportunity to talk. Uh, if you think this would be a good idea, uh, you could stay on that same slide, Christine. Okay, sorry. Um, yeah. Um, if you got, if you have some ideas about what um, what you might be able to do in terms of aroma audit, uh, if you think you could use this checklist as a way to help you understand what the baseline is, what you think of this concept of establishing a baseline so that you can show uh, your performance and your progress, um, just about anything that I've talked about so far. Um, any any thoughts from the group that? on the line. Okay, so everybody is unmuted. If anybody has questions or conversation about some thoughts about this. I'm not seeing anything come up. Anybody on the line think they would be interested in doing this kind of aroma audit, that it would be useful to them to help them understand what they what they can actually do at their own agency to improve aroma implementation? All right. Um, still not any questions. Barbara, I, ha I do have a question about the aroma audit. And, and, and to maybe back up a little bit into that, is there a... In your experience, is there um, someone at the agency that like that that you can identify almost immediately that would be good at taking on this Roma audit? I mean, the Roma uh, the Roma professional certainly can do that, but I think even if you don't have a Roma professional embedded at the agency, how would you even start this? Where would be the place that you would start that? Well, of course, I would start it with the the certified Roma person um, in most cases. But if there is not someone um, that's that 
that is certified in Roma, then uh, often the planner at the agency, someone who's, who's involved with writing the grants, someone who's actually involved in the um, assessment and strategic planning process, uh, someone who takes a leadership role in those areas uh, would be key uh, to, to do something like this. Um, it's really designed to be used by someone who um, understands the Roma uh, concept um, intimately so that you can actually uh, look at your baseline. Um, and it's really kind of a way to help people um, improve their organizational standards uh, scores as well because um, Roma is, of course, uh, in, an integral part in almost all of the areas of the organizational standards um, uh, pieces. And so uh, to be able to do a Roma audit like this and find out what's exactly happening could help to um, understand what could be done to improve in those areas where maybe the agency has not passed a standard. Um, so whoever's involved or whoever's been assigned the task of uh, monitoring the organizational standards at an agency would be another person that might be involved. Um, so another question then, Barbara, I'm wondering, and what I, what I guess, let me back up. What I'm seeing at, at some agencies is that they are now designating staff as either planners or as quality control specialists. Is that usually a, a position that would probably be more, more likely to be involved in doing the Roma audit? Yes, and we would hope they would also be involved in the Roma certification Absolutely. process as well. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, we're getting more folks with those titles across the country, actually. Okay. All right. Um, I still, I just want to- Nothing remind, from the group. Yeah, I'm still reminding everyone that you are all on mute. This is a great opportunity to ask, ask some questions or to chime in what your thinking is. Well, let me go ahead and talk about what we're seeing from the field. So that might give people some ideas. Okay, thank you, Christine. I'm talking away, realizing that I'm muted. Um, so in the next part of this discussion that I wanted to share with you are really some things that we've gotten from the field so far, some ideas of what we've been seeing. So um, the next slide, please. The next thing is really just um, uh, the things that we know have changed or are changing. Um, you know, originally, as I said, our goal was to um, um, I, just to share an increase in knowledge. And so it was easy for us to keep track of what has changed because we could say that there's so many people uh, came to the training and so many people had an increase in knowledge as a, as a result of the training. So that, that at least gave us some um, understanding of what was changing. Uh, but then we're saying, so what? Well, so what's happened as a result of um, this under increased understanding of Roma? And so um, on the next slide, these are some things that we've, that, we've, that we've heard over and over from across the country. So um, these are things that are changed or in the process of changing. This is a big one. Um, to make sure or be planning to make sure that there are explicit connections uh, between the community needs assessment and the strategic plan of course, and the community action plan. But what implementers found as they're doing their portfolio was it was a real disconnect between the information that was in the community needs assessment and then the strategic plan for the agency. Um, so that, that was a, an area where 
uh, in terms of a baseline or aroma audit where people found there were errors in, in their in their implementation of the full aroma cycle and really um, that uh, caused them to have some problems with their organizational standards as well. So uh, this was a big one that people said, well, we're going to make sure it, that um, in our next strategic planning process that we really utilize the information that we got from the community needs assessment. The next one is that uh, many people um, were asking their customers what they thought the community needs were or what they needed, um, but they weren't doing customer satisfaction. So uh, with the new uh, American Customer Satisfaction Index that's been included in the state and federal accountability me measures, there's been a new focus on this concept of customer satisfaction. And the idea of customer satisfaction is also a part of the organizational standards. So that's another piece that the certified Roma professionals are reporting across the country that they're adding customer satisfaction surveys uh, or they're changing the content of some other surveys that they're already doing to include some customer satisfaction information. So if we can do some reporting that uh, that would say, um, we've included this activity, this is a strategy to increase agency capacity, and then what the next step would be what 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 changed as a result of having more customer satisfaction uh, information. So um, we don't know that yet. <laughs> um, this is another one where um, the implementers found in their portfolios that the need statements in the community needs assessment are vague. Uh, there's no real clear understanding of what the need is. Um, people have said there's a need for housing or there's a need for employment or there's a need for more income, but they're, they were not explicit in uh, whose need is it. So to be able to say um, this is the level of need that we see in the community and this is how we plan to address it, that all starts with having a clear identification of need. So, um, so if we can see changes in um, the problem identification in the community needs assessment, that should help us move towards uh, increased agency capacity. Um, and this was one that you might think would be more common that uh, that in the agency plans they were talking about outputs uh, more than outcomes uh, you can see it's down it's down number four on the list it, it wasn't uh, it wasn't as much of a of a concern I think uh, people believe that they can identify outcomes uh, uh, through the process but the fact that this whole concept of a theory of change means that we expect that there will be a change and we expect that there will be some outcomes that are identified. So that's something that we want to see happening. And then the last two here, increase the agency's general understanding of Roma. Um, I, that's an important piece. And then this last one, creating a local theory of change. Uh, we're seeing that this is one of the big strategies that help um, agencies improve their uh, ability to achieve results, this, this whole concept of theories of change. Um, there, there are a couple of things that the theory of change concept uh, does that really will help increase the agency's capacity. Um, and the next two slides are, are about that. So. Um, the next one is the breakdown of silos using a whole agency approach. Um, this is a huge element that the, the Roma professionals are uh, reporting. Those Roma professionals who have taken the task of creating local theories of change uh, have seen this this movement to uh, looking at what the agency is about, not what individual programs are about, and breaking down silos. It's a very important piece of agency capacity building. Um, it's part of the um, the two generation approach. 
and so on. But um, this is a huge area of improvement that the local theory of change can produce. And the next one. is the acknowledgement of the real need to do community level work. Um, as part of looking at what the needs are and identifying the needs in the community assessment, um, part of the outcome of that is really to have the agency reconsider the level of community work that they're doing. Um, are they engaged in community work? Uh, or are they, uh, are they not? And uh, what kind of community work are they doing? And so um, those those two areas, the breakdown of silos and the acknowledgement of community, or the importance of community work, um, are two things that we can definitely see have changed um, because of the Roma professionals being um, uh, more active in agencies. And uh, I thought this would be interesting to share to you. So next slide. So when we ask people what was the most effective strategy in producing these things, and here's what people said, sharing key elements of Roma with peers and colleagues in the agency. So just being able to talk to other people about Roma. So many times the Roma professional will say, I can't really do anything in my agency because my executive director doesn't buy in or my leadership team isn't buying into Roma. So we, we don't know what we can do. Um, and so what, what folks have said is, well, you can always talk to people. You can, um, you can, you can share the concept of Roma with your peers. Um, really, really consider how uh, Roma is a part of the process. Uh, um, part part of what's happening in the agency. So um, I'm going to share with you. Um, this is a, this is a, the experience of one of our Roma um, implementers from Missouri. So the next slide is called "Bringing the Roma Cycle to Life." So what she did was she went around and she talked to her colleagues and she she asked them, she talked to them about the Roma cycle and she asked them questions. She did a Roma audit uh, and she asked them questions about, well, how do you do assessment and how do you do planning and how often do you do it? When do you do it? Who do you do it with? Uh, so she, she really um, had conversations with the leadership of different programs in her agency. And then what she did was she produced little Roma cycles uh, for them and gave them back to them and said, here's what I heard you say, how you are doing Roma. So she was catching them doing Roma. So the next slide is an example of weatherization. This was what she said um, weatherization uh, did in terms of the Roma cycle. So. Um, she she specifically gave them back this information, um, uh, and they then they were able to say, oh yes, I guess I am doing Roma. This is what I'm doing. So she did weatherization, and she also did Head Start, which is the next slide. So she did Head Start and early Head Start. Now many cases of uh, people have found that the Head Start folks already are doing so much of this performance management and continuous improvement that's a part of Roma that they uh, it was, it's easy for them to talk about these pieces but uh, she was able to talk about um, how their at their activities really are demonstrations of the implementation of the full Roma cycle so um, I think that's that's pretty interesting to think of um, of what 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 people are doing. So, any any thoughts or comments from the group about this idea of um, using um, Roma to talk to your peers, uh, and then just sort of giving them back their uh, the understanding of the fact that they're already doing Roma. A lot of times people will say, oh, oh, we don't do Roma in our agency. But, you know, you talk to them and they really are doing it. They're just not identifying it as such. Any thoughts from the group? I think you can raise your hand and 
I think Christine is gone, and but but, but we still have Crystal at the helm. Okay, next next slide is really kind of an example of um, catch them doing Roma. Um, we we really want Roma to be integrated. Uh, this, we don't want Roma to be an add-on. Okay, I have to do org standards and then I have to do Roma. So um, just go ahead and pull all these up on this slide. There's a list of them. Um, meeting organizational standards is an example of how people are doing Roma. The fact that their community assessment informs their plan, that they have, um, that they're implementing high quality services, they're engaged in community strategies, they're reporting, they're integrating their reports from other funding sources into an agency wide report. These are things that agencies are often doing right now that that you as the certified Roma professional could catch them at and 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 say oh you're doing this is an excellent example of how Roma is happening at our agency so the more that we can share that the more that we can talk about how Roma is actually happening at the agencies across the country um, the more that we're going to be able to prove that Roma is useful and valuable to the agency. Uh, and then the next slide is really just sort of saying that if we don't have value, if we can't, if we can't say that Roma actually delivers something of value, uh, then we, then the, then what's the point of of the whole Roma process? But it should be in, enriching the organization's value to its customers, its funders, the community stakeholders, and to its employees. So um, this is a question, has being an NCRI or an NCRT increased your agency's continuous use of the Roma cycle? And what will you do next? So um, the last slide that I have to share is really just a charge. Uh, what do what what could the next steps be? Um, identify your agency's baseline using this Roma audit idea. Help us to improve the use of that Roma audit checklist, and then create opportunities for sharing key concepts within your agency. Uh, so the idea of uh, actually putting into place. Some of the things that we believe to be true of Roma that we identify the need before we um, before we jump to what we're going to do. We know what the need is. We have an idea of what could change or what our outcome could be, and then we uh, then we identify uh, strategies and then we identify services that we might do. Uh, so so we we want to put this Roma principle into practice. So um, anybody willing to take up the charge here on these next steps and say, well, I'm, I'm willing to try it out and um, be able to share it at one of our next um, uh, webinar series discussions or between webinar series to talk about things? So I think you've all been unmuted again. Okay, maybe being unmuted is not a good thing. <laughs> hey, Christine? Yes, hello. <laughs> Hi, this is Jennifer from Rockford, sorry. Hi, I'm Jennifer. And it doesn't, I mean, microphone, it doesn't always work. Um, I, I would very much be interested in doing the audit. I don't know if I'd be ready to share at our next call, though. <laughs> That's very good comment. Uh, we, you might be able, to, you might be willing to share that you did it and what your experience was without sharing what your results were. We're not really interested in um, an evaluation of your agency, but we want to know how did it go? What, what was, what, ha how did, how did the process work? So, um, so I don't know if that makes it easier for you to share what you did, but. Um, but we'd certainly fact, love to hear. 
I now have an implementer as well, so hopefully since I've got a second body, we can actually get this done. Oh, that's wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. Great, great. Anybody else have any ideas? Okay. Okay. And any questions for Barbara before we um, conclude this webinar? Okay. Well, thank you very much for your attention this morning, and um, I'm sure we'll be following up with you. Um, do, do we have the list of the attendees that we could send them uh, follow-up emails with copies of the, um, the checklist? Yes, yes, we do. Great, great. Okay, so look for that, and um, we'll be interested in getting your feedback as you uh, as you start to identify a baseline for your agency. Yes, definitely. And thank you, Barbara. Um, just a couple of things. Um, our next webinar of this series will be on June 26th, and that will be at 10 a.m. Um, and that topic will cover community development 101, um, and that will be hosted by um, Andrea Rungi. So that will be our next webinar. Um, th thank you to everyone for attending, and um, we will conclude this webinar. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you, Barbara.